So the purpose of this first video is to cover things that we need to get started with Azure Cloud Services such as Azure SDK, as well as the initial project setup, and finally an explanation of both web and work. And then FYI, important timestamps are going to be inside the video description as well as the pinned comment. So if you're using Visual Studio 2017, it'll come with something called Visual Studio Installer. Looks a little something like this. Um, you may have to update your Visual Studio version if you're not up to the most current version first. And once you finish that, you just click on Modify. Right? It's going to have this getting things ready thing pop up come up. And uh, there's just a few things that you want to confirm that you have. I have more than you need to to get your project set up. But um, the key things you want to have is dot not dot net desktop development. Um, actually, I don't even think. Yeah, yeah, you do need. Nah, I don't know. Just go with dot net desktop development, anyways. Uh, ASP dot net web development. Definitely you need this one. Um, Azure development. Definitely need this one as well. This this will actually include, as you can see, the Azure SDK as well as other developer tools. And I think that's all you need. Um, additionally, you can, or alternatively, if you want, you could just do it by individual components. Um, you should come here anyways and make sure that you have the frameworks that you want for .NET, right? Uh, you could also come here to confirm that whatever selections you have, have the tool sets that you need and the tools that you, you require. So once you have everything set up, all you need to do is click on Modify and it'll just start installing it. There'll be uh, an additional section about configuration. Um, I don't think there's much, it's pretty straightforward. You just finish it, you install it, you're, you're good to go for Visual Studio 2017. Now, if you're using Visual Studio 2015, you're gonna need to install something called Web Platform Installer. Uh, you can just type it in Google or Bing, Microsoft give me money. Once you click on that, you'll have an option to choose either the x86 version, or uh, which is 32-bit, or x64, which is 64-bit. Download the appropriate version, and we'll go on to the installation phase. So once you have Web Platform Installer 5.0 uh, downloaded and installed, you want to open it up, and by default, you'll see the most current um, SDK version that's available. Uh, we're just going to work with SDK 2.9, so you want to switch over to products. Uh, go to the search box, type in you know Azure SDK 2.9. You see a couple options. This is the one that you want to use, the one that says VS 2015, uh, Microsoft Azure SDK for .NET. Right, so you just want to add it, install. It's going to run the installation process. Um, same, similar to Visual Studio 2017's installer, it's going to have some kind of configure step, as you can see. And it's pretty straightforward, you just need to follow it through. Uh, I just want to note that I have the following specs on the laptop that I was downloading and installing these um, SDK from the platformer. And it took around maybe roughly around 15 minutes or so. So if you have a lower end computer um, and, and it might be like, you know, looks like it's stuck. Uh, don't be alarmed, it just takes a while in general. So once you have the SDK installed, whether it's uh, Visual Studio 2017 or 2015, uh, you can start your cloud service project. Uh, moving forward, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio 2017. Um, however, the process in which you make a new cloud service project, as well as how do you add it in a, uh, a new cloud service or additional cloud service project to a pre-existing project is exactly the same, whether it's VS 2015 or 2017. So let's start. So you're going to go to new project. Um, you want to find uh, under Visual C Sharp, uh, you should find cloud and Azure Cloud Service. Give it whatever name you want. Um, you can change additional settings like uh, the location, the local rep repository. More importantly, the framework matters. There's actually a chart that has a framework, which you can see in a few seconds. So as I was saying, um, there's a SDK compatibility as well as a .NET framework compatibility. Um, long story short, I'll have this link inside the description as well as the pinned comment. But as you can see, different family releases, uh, OS families, 
uh, different frameworks that are supported, right? 4.0 to 4.62, right? The previous versions have 4.0 to 4.52, so on and so forth. So you're going to want to match it up based on your application. If you're not changing any business log or modernizing it anyway, you want to match it up on which OS family it is uh, under, falling under and then have the compatible SDK version accordingly. So anyway, um, as I said, make sure that you have all the, the proper settings set up and then just hit OK. So let's start. We'll just use uh, the regular web role by default. And um, when you make the cloud service project for the first time and you select web role, for example, it'll actually create the web role project with it. The web role project is essentially um, the application, the web app. Alternatively, you can add a cloud service project to a pre-existing project or solution, which is more along the lines of what you likely would be doing, uh, modernizing an application or just migrating an application to the cloud. So anyways, we have the solution sample project over here, and we're going to start by right-clicking on it, going to add new project, and same procedure. We still have Cloud, Azure Cloud Service, whatever settings you need for the dot framework, and the uh, well, the location really doesn't matter; it's just local. You want to hit OK, and instead of adding a, a default like Web Role like we did when we we're making a fresh project, we'll just hit OK right here. Okay, so once we have that set up, you want to go to Add, uh, and the Web Project, Web Role Project and Solution. You see that we have the project name, sample project, right? You can double click on it or you can click on OK. Just wait it out. It's going to add it as a default web role project. So there you go. You just added a cloud service project to a pre existing project. So next, let's cover what the difference between a web and worker role is and what each one of them are to begin with. So let's take a look at the web role. Uh, according to this link from CloudMonix, a web role is a cloud service role in Azure that is configured and customized to run web applications developed on programming languages, yada, yada, yada. Just list a few of them, right? Uh, and a work role is any role in Azure that runs applications and service level tasks, which generally do not require IIS. In worker roles, IIS is not installed by default. They are mainly used to perform supporting background processes along with web roles, uh, web roles and do tasks such as automatically compressing uploaded images, run scripts when something changes in the database, get new messages from queue and process and more. So the way I like to think about it is that a web role might do something like make connection to a database and extract some information and display that information in a neat way, such as, you know, getting a list of movies, displaying it on a table or a list. A worker role, on the other hand, might do a different task, such as, you know, having a, a zipped file that was deployed with the application and unzipping it and um, maybe triggering installation of some kind of software that the application is reliant on or even opening up um, unzipping it to have an excel sheet that the web app can you know read from something like that um, not to say that that can't be done with a web role and using something like startup task commands but that's something we'll cover later the same link from CloudMonix goes on to show us the difference between the web and worker roles, mainly that a web role automatically deploys and hosts your app through IIS, and a worker role does not use IIS and runs your app standalone. So another example I might give for a worker role is like uh, maybe a console app that's doing something in the background, maybe some kind of installation, um, software installation that your, your application is reliant on. and you know, you don't need that to be in the web role. You could put it in the web role, do something such as uh, startup task commands. Um, but we'll, we'll cover that later. But that's we can stick with an example like that and the unzipping. Basically, you're not you're not deploying anything through IIS. That's the main takeaway. Um, a link to this CloudMonix link or page will be available inside the description as well as the pinned comments. I highly suggest you take a look at this um, page for yourself, give it a good read through. They do an excellent job explaining the big difference between web and worker roles. So in the following videos for the series, we'll cover things such as making a storage account and blob storage, um, as well as tools that we can use to interact with it, such as Azure Explorer or Cloudberry. We'll also cover making a web role project that actually makes a connection to um, a database that's on Azure. 
uh, in addition, we'll also cover deployment of a worker role project. And finally, we'll go over a topic such as um, having startup tasks. Um, for example, inside your web role project, you can have a startup task that actually installs some software that's required for that application to work. And um, we'll see if there's any other additional topics to cover as we go through these uh, tutorial series. But as of right now, those are the topics. And thanks for watching. I hope you stick around to learn a little bit more about Azure and get a nice little introduction to it. Take care.